what's up guys this is ESP101 here and this is going to be the first video for the CSGO ESP tutorial um, this is going to be building off of the hooked end scene with the dummy device we made last video so if you haven't watched that video already you're going to need that template um, for this video so you're going to have to go watch that one first and if you've never you made any cheats before you're definitely in the in the right place but on the wrong video you need to go to the forum and check out the get started guide, the start here guide, and do all those videos and then come back here and you'll have all the information you need in order to complete this. As well as the other CSGO videos that are already published. Um, those will be very helpful as well. So open up the template that we created last video. The first thing we need to do is add a new source file and call it hack.cpp and then add one more header file and call that hack.h um, for the header file or then we're going to go to includes and we're going to include this new header file we made um, hack.h and then we're going to start out on the hack.h file um, by making some vector struts so vec2 load xy um, and then we can paste this twice make it a VEC3 and a VEC4 um, ZW and Z and that's going to be our simple uh, structures we're going to make a class called hack which is going to have some stuff for the game for the hack that we're creating so the first one we're going to do is you and pointer T w, DW entity list um, and this is going to be an offset for the entity list um, and then we're going to have another one DW view matrix and that's going to be an offset for the view matrix. Um, then we're going to have uint pointer t engine and uint pointer t client. Um, for now, that should be it. In in hacks.cpp, we need to include um, include says that age, um, and that'll fix those. All right. Now what we need to do is we need to create the player class, the entity class. Um, so we're going to set that up just blank for now. Um, and then we're going to also set up the entity list class. Um, and in, in that entity list, we're going to have entity list object class. So three classes, just quick, and they'll build off each other. Um, in the entity list, we're going to have 32 entity list objects. Just since we're usually never, gonna, you're, you're never gonna have more than 32 players in a CS:GO game. So it's for this, it's really that's all you need. Um, inside of there, you're gonna need an int pointer struct um, for that current entity, and then 12 bits of padding um, to space them out. Um, a lot of games it's just four, um, so after the class it'd be just zero padding since the four is in the pointer. But for CSGO, it's 16 bits makes up a class, so we need that 12 padding after the 4. Um, now inside of here, um, we're going to actually use this cool method that um, I saw Cleon use it once um, in a comment somewhere, and then I picked it up off of that. Um, but I don't think it originated in Guide to Hacking Forum, but I don't know who the actual source comes from. But what this does, it, it allows us to define the member variables like in read class. But it automatically pads it for us, so we can enter like just like two if we want, or like five or whatever. Um, for us, we're gonna have is dormant, um, i hell. Um, we're gonna have vec origin, and we're gonna have i team num. Um, and the way we're gonna get these is by using, um, you know, what, I'm actually just gonna paste this in here. We're gonna be using these hash defines, um, and you can copy these down real quick. Uh, pause the video or whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm not going to go super in depth on this, but there's a post on the forum of it if you want to check it out. It, it just pads for us. Um, so we can start adding these down here now. So the way we're going to do that is by using this define member M um, macro that we just placed here. And we're just going to put its type, um, what the name is going to be that we want and then the offset and it's that simple and then we can access it directly through the class so ed is offset for is dormant and it's a boolean it's that easy so we're going to do another one to find member n um, this one's an int it's going to be i health and 0x100 um, another one to find member n this one's going to be a vec3 
Epic Origin, and that's Xerox 138. And the last one for this video, we're just going to use these four for this one. Um, it's going to be an int, I team num, and that's going to be Xerox F4. Right, so that is that for now. Um, oh yeah, and these, these need to be wrapped in a union. So paste all these into a union, and you're good to go for that. No, we're going to have a couple more things down here in, in this hack class. So now that we have the int stuff, we can make an int pointer to our local entity. Um, now that we have an entity list, we can make an entity list pointer to the entity list. Um, and then we're also going to want to have a float view matrix. Um, now we're going to make some functions down here. We're going to have init, um, update, and those are for just the class itself. But then we're going to have a couple for the cheat, which is check valid int. And we're going to pass an int pointer into that. And that's going to return if the int is like alive and well, and we want to draw it on the screen. Um, otherwise, we don't want to draw it on the screen if it's dead or ourselves or something like that. Um, and then we're going to have bull world to screen. And we're going to pass a vector position and a vec2 reference screen. And what that does is it takes a 3D world position and it translates into a 2D coordinate on our screen so that we can draw boxes and stuff. Um, so go over to hack CPP now. And we'll start with init, since it's really easy. Um, we'll set our client equal to a unit pointer t get module handle um, client underscore panorama.dll. And then engine is going to be equal to unit pointer t get module handle engine.dll. And then we're going to have the entity list equal to an entity list pointer and that is at client plus dw entity list uh, which is that offset we made earlier which um, we're gonna have to set these offsets in a minute I'll show you how to dump them with guided hacking dumper in just a moment um, local entity is now going to be um, int list dot ints at the zero position the first int is going to be our cell um, and that's the way I like to do it there's a couple other ways but that's how I like to do it um, and then we're going to do hack update, and this is just going to steal our view matrix. So we're going to do the ma view matrix in there, and then p pipe pointer. Uh, and this is going to be at client plus dw view matrix. Um, size of view matrix. Right. All right, now the next one is our check valid in. And we're going to pass again an in pointer. And basically we're going to say if our int doesn't exist, so if it's equal to null pointer, return false. Um, if int equals hack dot, nope, equals local int, return false. If int dot health is less than or equal to zero, so if it's dead, return false. Um, and if our int is dormant, then we're also not going to draw it and return false. And then if all of those pass, we can return true, saying that it's a good end. Right, after that, we're going to have our boolean hack roll to screen. And we're going to pass in vector3 position, vector2 reference screen. Um, and I'm just going to run through this really quickly. Um, I'm not going to go super in-depth on this world to screen since I want to keep these videos quite short for the whole long series um, and just hit all of the ESP topics. And there's a there's um, a whole thread on world of screen functions for different games explaining how they work and whatnot on the forum. I'll I'll paste that link uh, right here in the source. We're gonna start this with a vector four clip chords, and then clip chords dot x equals o dot x times view matrix zero plus pose dot y times view matrix one plus pose dot z times view matrix two plus view matrix three. And we're gonna do this like four times. Um, I, sp I didn't capitalize this. All right, we're gonna do this four times for X, Y, Z, and W. Um, so follow me closely. And then each one of these should go four, eight, 12. It should be one, five, nine, 13. So you're just adding four each time. Um, two, six, 10, 14, 
and three, seven, eleven, fifteen. All right, and then if our clip chords.w is less than 0 0.1f, um, that means it's like behind us and we don't want to draw it. All right, ndc, ndc.x equals clip chords.x divided by clip chords.w, ndc.y equals clip chords.y divided by clip chords.w, ndc.z equals clip chords.z divided by clip chords. And then we're going to set the position, so screen.x equals window width divided by 2 times ndc.x plus ndc.x plus window width divided by 2. Screen.y equals negative, this time it's going to be negative, window height divided by 2 times ndc.y. And then it's going to be add that to ndc.y plus window height divided by 2. And return true because we didn't fail. Um, right, so that's our world of screen function, our check our check uh, valid and function update and init. Um, so we're pretty much good to go on that. Um, actually, first of all, we're going to have to uh, dump these. So the way we do that is by you download guided hacking dumper and you open CSGO. Um, and you're just going to open the folder and it's just going to have these. Um, and when you run this exe, it's going to use this uh, file which has all the patterns in it. Um, and it's going to create a cheat table and it's going to create a .h file. And then you're going to want to just open the .h file for now. Where these DW entity list, um, you can just search for it. Um, so this is going to be the current offset for that one. And these will change, so if, if you're watching the video sometime in the future, it literally changed twice while I was making this video. So I don't know why they had two updates in a row like that, but they changed twice. Um, so now we're going to go in our DLL main, and we're going to create a pointer to this uh, new class we made. And in our thread, after we hook in scene, we're going to go hack equals new hack, and then we're just going to call our init. And then in the hack loop, we're going to call our update function. Just going to keep our, v our um, view matrix updated. Um, and then we're just going to draw. We have to we have to set up the drawing now. So drawing CPP, drawing.h. In drawing.h, we're going to do draw line, int x1, int y1, int x2, int y2, int thickness, and d3d color. RGB 255, 255, 255, 255. And that should be. I don't know why I'm doing that. It's just supposed to be D3D color. Um, that's the one I use a lot, so I just did that on accident. Oh, we're not going to pass it through like that, though. Alright, so drawing.cpp now. We're going to set up this function. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create a D3D X line pointer. Call it line L. Um, D3D X create line. Um, and that's going to be at our P device, and we're going to save it at line L. All right, and then um, the left point or whatever point, or whatever, it's going to be a D3D X vector 2, X1, Y1, and the other point, the other vertice or whatever, it's going to be D3D X vector 2. And then that's going to be X2, Y2, and then line L dot set width. Oh. Do, 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 do. Right, I forgot to create this. D3D X vector two um, line array two. Right, okay. And then line L dot set width. It's gonna be thickness. And then we're just gonna draw it. Super easy for the line. It's a little bit more than the rectangle, but it's still really easy. Um, I'm gonna draw that. And then we will release it so we don't. Um, kill everything, trying to create a bunch of lines every single run, uh, and not deleting them ever. All right. Um, that's not important. That's important. I forgot a comma there. Don't forget a comma there. All right, so that succeeds. And then now in the DLL main, we're just going to remove this rectangle, because that's what's the white square on the screen from last video. Um, snap lines. 
Now, first of all, we're going to loop through our entity list. I equals 1, I is less than 32, I plus plus. Um, we're starting this at 1 because we want to skip our player, even though we have the, ch the check in. Um, so we'll skip it anyways, we just want to do that anyways. And we're going to do int pointer current int um, equals hack dot int list dot ints at i dot int um, if hack dot check valid int current int so if that passes no if it fails so if not hack check valid int then we're going to continue which just skips the current iteration in the for loop otherwise we're going to go vector two int position 2d um, and then we're going to go if hack world the screen and their current entities vector origin um, and then we're going to pass an int pose 2d to save it there if this passes if they're on the screen then we're going to draw the line to int pose 2d dot x int pose 2d dot y and then window width divided by 2 and window height and then we'll just say 2 for thickness and um, we'll set up a color variable so right here if current int dot team equals heck dot local int dot team um, d3d color d3d color color We'll go color equals D3 color ARGB um, 285 and we'll make it green for a teammate and then we'll go red if they're an enemy. And that should draw our snap line. Um, we can just comment that there. And then we can now open our Guided hacking dump or injector, my bad. Shout out to Brohan for making this awesome injector for everyone to use. And we'll just inject that. So yep, when we inject the game, um, the snap lines will show up. And they're red since these are all technically enemies. But in a real game, they're gonna be half and half. Um, all your teammates are gonna show up as green and they will, enemies will show up as red. All right, so in the next video, I'll probably go over 2D boxes and uh, name or maybe health, um, ESP, and I'm not exactly sure how I'll go about health if it's just going to be a text or a bar yet, but we might also cover the RCS crosshair, which is super easy. It's a couple lines of code, but um, all right, I'll see you next time. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, guidedhacking.com slash donate, patreon.com slash guidedhacking. Please support us so that we can continue to make videos, and peace out.